Welcome back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I have an awful garbage filthy mouth so viewer discretion is advised but if you're not into that or weird shit in general this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to exit out the video here. No harm, no foul, but I'll remember our Tom fondly. Why hello my little chipmunks. Happy New Year. As you all know we're starting this new year right and that is talking about a brand that I have a very complicated relationship with. We are facing our fears in 2022. Listen, I want to love them, okay? I want to love this brand, but I find myself not loving everything. Dare I say some things are just overrated or just awful. <laughs> but yet here I am in the new year looking for another wave of disappointment. So let's talk about the new Natasha Denona mini barbecue palette that I love calling it, but it's a mini Biba palette and the teeny tiny rose cheek duo. And let's see if I wasted my money or not. Starting with the mini Biba palette, this retails for $25. A mini eyeshadow palette inspired by Natasha's best-selling Biba eyeshadow palette, featuring five all new essential nude, brown, and coral shades in luxe blendable textures. So this little guy comes in the standard mini Natasha Denona packaging, which I love because one, it has this incredible snap, kind of like a hot dog. And I find it to be very secure and easy to store. I'm also a fan of the formula found in these palettes because they're usually super solid and quickly become go-to palettes for my favorite basic yet beautiful color stories. I'm a fan of the formula found in these palettes because they're usually super solid and quickly become go-to palettes because the color stories are just so beautiful yet so fucking boring. The pure definition of a basic bitch palette. But above all that, the formula is so easy to use. This truly does the work for you and I love palettes that do that. If I'm paying all this money, I might as well have you apply it to my face. The other thing that's great about this palette is that yes, while it is the mini Biba palette, this is a mere extension of the palette because these are all five new shades. And if you don't know what the Biba palette looks like, this is what she looks like right here. This is a great palette. I actually wound up picking this up two Christmases ago. Honestly, best decision I've ever made. I didn't pick it up when it was full price. I got it when it was discounted. I believe on Natasha Denona's website. Highly recommend. This is a great basic bitch palette and don't you worry, I'm gonna be doing another basic bitch palette in the future because I don't think I've ever talked about this one. This one's fucking solid. So with that said, I was super excited to get this palette because this is kind of like um, an angler fish and then this is like the little fish that sits on top of the angler fish that usually eats the parasites off of it. So that's what I loved <laughs> about this whole release. I was like, oh, you're like the little, the little fish that eats all the shit off the other fish. Great, all right. Anyway, since it's five shades, let's break it down by shade. And I'm gonna start with this side of the palette, which is called Bruno. And this one is a creamy matte formula. There's three different formulas within this palette, but majority of the palette is creamy mattes or cream to matte, no, creamy matte, creamy matte whatever. Anyway, this is described as a deep mahogany brown. And you'll notice that this also serves as the darkest shade in the whole palette. And listen, to be honest, it's kind of a weird shade. It can be pigmented in ways, but when you start to blend, you notice that there is a little bit of patchiness to it. So the shade needs a little help. When I combine it with the shade Wink, which is a cream to powder formula, the two together work incredibly well. The patchiness disappears and I notice a gradient between the two shades. It's very, very pretty. Now, the only time I found the shade Bruno to work well on its own is you used as a liner shade. Whether you use it on the top or the bottom, it works great. It's when you use it in the outer corner that you notice that it's just, uh, it's not what you want it to be. In a way, I feel like the shade gets a little bit stiff because I find that when placing it on the outer corner and when you do start to blend, you do kind of get that weird, like rough kind of line. Ugh, really annoying. The other thing I noticed when used alone is that the longevity is not really that great. Except when you use it as a lash line shade, you do get a little bit more use out of it. It's only in the outer corner. I find that it disappears after five hours. It doesn't disappear completely, but you do have those noticeable holes, making it very, very Swiss cheese-like. Not a fan. But then that doesn't happen when you do add the shade wink. When you combine those, you have a little bit more time with those two. Because it wasn't until about like maybe the seven to eight hour mark where I started to notice that it was getting a little bit faded. But not not as noticeable as it is on its own. So I don't know, it's kind of a weird shade. The shade next to that one is called Izzy. The nude dusty rose creamy matte was a really good shade. I had no issues with it. I use this both as a crease shade and to provide a little bit of dimension when using the shade Flush, which is the other creamy matte in this palette. It had excellent pigmentation, longevity, and blended incredibly easily. Again, like I mentioned, no real issues with the shade. I enjoyed it. Now, when I talk about the lash shade in this palette, I kind of question if 
this one was needed or that one was needed <sighs> but let me stop myself there and let's talk about the rest of the palette first the next shade is called blaze nude and this is the only metallic shade in the whole palette and this is described as a light rose nude unfortunately this is a pretty metallic shade that has a fair bit of fallout if you're not too careful so i would advise not using this with a dry brush while you do kind of get some decent payoff the fucking glitter bukkake is unreal so i feel like it definitely needs some sort of glitter glue just to keep everything contained but watch out because there will be a rogue sparkle or two. So I found that the best way to use the shade was to, to do my eye makeup first and then my base. But with that said, I love the color of the shade. I think it's so incredibly pretty. And I think it's the true standout in the palette for me. While messy, this formula was incredibly easy to work with. And because using it with glitter glue, you're not going to experience that wrinkly stone goblin labia texture that sometimes happens when you're using glitter glue. You know what I mean? Where it kind of gets like crunchy and it starts to solidify and it makes your eyelid feel like 100 pounds. You will not experience that with this shade. Everything is very, very smooth. And I think it blends beautifully with the rest of the palette. And I'm happy to report, while well, yes, it can be a little bit messy, you're not gonna experience any falling bukkake throughout the day, so that's great. The shade next to that is Plush, and this is another creamy matte shade. Described as a light, medium, dusty coral. And it pretty much operates very much the same as Izzy, meaning that pigmented, blendable, and has great longevity. And for this one, I only really use it as a crease shade, and it worked really, really well. Now, last but not least, we have the shade Wink. And this is described as a medium, dusty coral with a cream to powder finish. As I mentioned in the Bruno shade, this shade was good. And Bruno would be patchy as all hell if I didn't use this shade with it. The shade is pigmented, but you do need to build it up, especially if you want a much more substantial opacity. And I found that this shade offers dimension not only in the crease, but in the outer corner as well, especially when used with the shade Bruno. Again, I really do love the gradient between the two. I think what is kind of funky though about this and say the shade Izzy, I kind of question if we really needed the shade Izzy because when using Izzy and Wink, they're really, way too fucking similar. I cannot tell the difference between the two. And since Wink has the ability to make Bruno better, I would rather keep this shade and get rid of Izzy and find something completely different. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, the tones are way too similar. And usually I'm not a fan of the cream to powder formula. I like this one though. I have to say the last few palettes that had this type of formula, I have been a fan of. I think it was just the Metropolis palette just was not my cup of tea at all. I could not make it work. But since then, I found myself really enjoying this formula. For $25, I'm usually all about these palettes and I often find that these are better quality than some of the bigger palettes. Maybe not so much the $129 palettes, but definitely the $65 ones. Those are kind of really, really hit or miss. Now I have a fair share of these mini palettes and this is just okay. <laughs> Even with the one shade not being the best, but I found a way to make it workable, it's still just okay. If anything, this is not even fucking memorable. And I bet you in a week's time, I will forget this palette even existed. I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something about this formula that just feels different in comparison to the mini palettes. Now don't get me wrong, it's not the worst one I've ever tried, but it's nowhere near the best. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. The other thing too about this palette is that like I know with the mini ones, it's a very, very small color story. And I usually find that even though it is a smaller color story, I can get away with making like two or three different looks, maybe even four if I'm lucky. This, I kind of feel like I can only do one thing. That's it. Especially when there's only one shimmer option and all the other mattes just look too fucking similar. The two looks I could create is either this one <laughs> or just remove the shimmer. Like, ugh, I don't know, like I wish there were more options here. I feel like there's not a lot of variety and in that way I kind of feel like this is a very one note palette. So yeah, I don't know, because the color tones are too similar, I kind of really question whether they should have replaced at least one or two of these creamy mattes and put in perhaps like a darker shimmer shade or something like that. But in any case, this palette should be renamed Groundhog Day because you're gonna be experiencing the same shit over and over again, so. And is this worth $25? Nah, not really. If you really wanted it, like you really wanted it, get it when it's on a deep discount. Anything more than $12 is a fucking waste. <laughs> or, you know, just don't get it because, you know, you have this palette 20 times over in your collection. Just saying. So yeah, totally skip out on this. You don't really need it. Now the next product I want to talk about is the Rose and Cheek Duo. This retails for $19, a must-have mini cheek duo featuring two luscious new shades of Natasha's iconic cream blush and highlighter formula with a rosy radiant finishes. So this little guy is in the same packaging that's usually in the other mini palettes. The only thing is that what I hate about this packaging is that once you get your fingerprints all over it, it just looks like shit. So like I get it, it's cute, it's like aesthetically pleasing, but also looks like shit. <laughs> when you do open it up, you get a nice little mirror here and you have your blush 
blush and your highlighter. Again, I also do like this packaging. Well, yes, not a fan of the outside because it kind of does have like a weird oily texture. I do love that snap. It's just fun. I feel like an evil bitch when I do it. Hmm. Let's talk about this side first, which is the, the cream blush. Bitch, I don't know about this formula anymore. I used to love Natasha's cream products, but something along the way just fucked everything up. I don't know. They're weird. I feel like I have to do hoop jumping to make it work. And that's not cool, okay? It's really annoying. And it reminded me of the cream blush that's in the Glam Face palette, except maybe this was a hair better or worse. I don't know, I can't really decide. This formula is definitely on the stiffer side, and even after only having it for a short time, it grows this gnarly, gnarly fucking texture on top of it. I don't know what that's about. So it's weird, like how I like to apply my blush is with a brush, right? I find that I usually have the best application with it. I find that it blends out more evenly than say a sponge. So with this one, you know, I went in with my little brush and as I was putting it on, I kind of noticed that some of the blush would just get stuck on one side of my face. And as I would try to blend it out, I couldn't. It would just remain there. And because it's like bunching up and drying down quickly, I felt like I was blending out cement. So then I would use my sponge that already had some like foundation remnants on it. And I found like that definitely moved it along. So it kind of feels like this blush is alive in a way and it feeds on moisture. <laughs> But then you kind of get into like this weird game of like, because you have foundation remnants on it and you're blending the product out, you're also eating the product. So it becomes this dance of trying to put blush on your face without fucking up everything underneath. Like it's just annoying to be honest with you. But after some time, I didn't mind the result of it. But again, it's like I had to work fast for it. And while the color is really pretty and I think flattering for my skin tone, it wasn't worth the hassle trying to make it work. I like products that are super easy to work with. And I just found that this was such a pain in the ass. It kind of reminds me of your friend Jennifer, who somehow always just makes it about herself. And it's like, really? That's what it was like. <laughs> It was like having to deal with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not fun. So I don't understand what exactly happened with this formula because I have other cream palettes that the formula is still so fucking consistent and creamy and smooth and beautiful and wonderful. This, I don't know what this is. This is weird. I also don't appreciate that weird fucking texture on the top of it, making it seem like I had it for fucking 55 years. I don't know what's going on with this product, but if they continue down this route, I don't think I will ever purchase any more cream products from this brand. So I don't know what the fuck's going on. Now, when it comes to the highlighter, bitch, it's banging. I'm obsessed. I love her. I love how metallic and slutty she is. And it's a shame that she's paired with such a shit blush. <laughs> I love this highlighter because it's buildable. Depending on the brush you use, you can make it a much more subtle glow or you can make it a very alien slut glow. I love that. I love that it's shiny. I love that it doesn't emphasize any weird texture, doesn't have unnecessary glitter bukkake. And I love that it's not for the faint of heart, especially when you build it up. You get excellent longevity with this product. And again, I cannot stress how wonderfully metallic it is. I love looking like I have the meat sweats. I'm fucking obsessed. Here's the downside. The color doesn't work for me. So as much as I love the formula in this, it is so fuck like I can't, I can't use it. Now I know you're like, oh, it looks fine on you. Yeah, because I'm also under studio lights, right? But if you see me in person, you're like, oh, oh you can easily notice how dark it is on my face. Like there's no hiding it. Even if I were to put it underneath my blush, it's still, it's too, it's too prominent. You know what I mean? Like it's too prominent. It's too much of a, a tone difference. <sighs> so yeah, not a fan. I'm really, really sad about that one. So if you're like me, your skin resembles a plastic bag of meat, not gonna work for you. But I could see this working for someone that has more of like a light and medium skin, at least as a starting point, so. <sighs> it is what it is, I suppose. In any case, um, yeah, both products were kind of a waste. <laughs> 2022, we're starting off real fucking fresh here, already full of disappointment. However, these products did come out in 2021, so you know what? Let's blame it on that. Let's blame it on that. <laughs> these were already doomed to fail <laughs> because they were made in 2021. We're trying to leave that shit behind us, friend, okay? We're not trying to drag that shit with us in the now, so don't pick this up. It's not worth it. Not worth it at all. Anyway, now I wanna hear from y'all. Let me know down below if you did pick up any of these products or if you were interested in picking them up or just, I don't know, tell me something something else. Tell me, tell me about your day. How are you doing? I would love to know. 
because I love hearing from you. And with that said, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button. It's free and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, to all my beautiful, wonderful patron bubbies. Thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting, filthy, trashy, really trashy, really filthy, really gross garbage boat afloat. Couldn't do without you and I love your adorable little delicious faces. If you want to know what is currently on my face, along with where to get these mediocre products, everything will be listed in the description box below. And I'll see you little pumpkins later. Bye!